It's an absolutely beautiful day out. You get outside, you jump inside your C5 Corvette, you wanna take it for a nice, leisurely drive, but then you realize that the battery is dead. Has this ever happened to you? If so, let me break down exactly what's happened to me, how I was able to diagnose the parasitic battery drain in the C5 Corvette, what I did, the methods that I used, and kind of just my whole thought process of kind of getting to fix this issue. Let's jump right into the video. What is up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Parasitic battery drain is actually a very common problem for these Corvettes. Uh, I didn't know this, so I want to like really give you guys kind of my thought process and everything like that and kind of give you the scenario what happened with me. So if you're new to my channel, I just bought this T5 Corvette to be a project vehicle for the channel. Uh, bought it, drove it home, two hour plus drive home. Thing was fine. It was in the garage for a couple of days. We went for a drive. Uh, everything was fine and then maybe like a couple days later I get into it and the battery was dead I was like, oh, I think I left the door open and I left the hood open too So I was like, oh that probably just killed that battery took the battery out Well, I tried to jump it with like a jumper pack. It didn't work at all. The battery was, was so dead So I just took the battery out went to AutoZone had them try and charge it twice that battery was completely dead My thought process was oh battery was just dying it having the the hood open probably just killed it and uh, we'll just move on and get a new battery got a new battery drove the car everything was fine parked the car then when i got back in it like some time later the battery was dead not fully dead like how it was before before i had nothing at all no crank no nothing like it just didn't do anything when you got inside the car the second time it did have power just didn't have enough power to start the car up i was able to jump it off of my jeep um so you know that was fine when this happened i was like okay something's up something's going on and i was like okay something's up something is draining the voltage from the battery because it's a brand new battery there's no way the battery is like faulty so my initial thought process was well i don't think it's the alternator the thing drove fine especially because i drove it multiple times for you know an hour plus uh, when we drove it home, it was like two plus hours. And when I was just driving around in the streets and everything like that, stop and go traffic, I was driving for a while. And I was like, okay, this, it didn't die while I was driving. So it's not the alternator, or at least it shouldn't be the, the alternator. The thing is charging it. It's only when it sits, that's when the battery dies. Which makes sense. A lot of people always say that. So what did I do? Went on the forms, the Corvette forms, tried to look up as much information as I possibly could about this situation, about the problem. There's a lot of information on the Corvette forms about what to check for, what to do. Some of the YouTubers did put out kind of the information of what they did, but I had to kind of like jumble together a lot of different pieces to kind of figure out what to really check for. So the big issues, the big problems that do come up, uh, which a lot of people say in the forums is for these seats, the seats, uh, the interior, <laughs> Actually, there's a lot of a lot of the stuff in the interior that can drain the power. Some people said that the passenger seat uh, is checking for if there's a someone sitting in it, so it's always checking. Uh, you know, if it needs to turn on the airbag, that can corrode um, the lumbar support. The Bose sound system uh, can be pulling power. Some people, if they do an aftermarket radio, can be pulling power. Um, a lot of different things inside the interior. Uh, but one of the biggest things though, what I did first, check this, this the very simple stuff. So wanted to make sure that, like, that the glove box wasn't cutting on, the vanity lights weren't coming on when I had the, you know, the vehicle closed and everything like that. Cause I did clean the vehicle and I was thinking like, well, maybe I turned something on by accident. I made sure that the dome lights were off. Uh, just all the small little things. Wanted to check all those little things first before I started diving into any, anything else. So. Checked all the interior pieces, make sure nothing was going on inside of there. Then the next biggest thing was to get a voltmeter to read the battery. So that's exactly what I did. I got a voltmeter just when I went to uh, AutoZone, I bought their cheap one there. I think is, this is the, it's basically this one. This is like their cheap, it was like 30 something dollars. Bought this one, hooked it up, was reading the uh, battery voltage that was on there. So the setting for it, you have the, 12 volt setting that you can put it on and you can read the voltage of your battery. So that was the first thing that I did, you know, check that, see like what it was and I just used simple math. Okay, I checked it in the morning and I checked it later that night to see what the drop off was while it was just sitting. I did also check to make sure when I started the car that, that the alternator was charging the battery and it did. It charged the battery, it jumped up from like 12 point, 
I don't know, maybe 12.5 12, 12 volts or something like that, all the way up to like 14 point something. So it was charging the battery, the battery was, was running. Um, but then, you know, once the car would sit, it, the voltage would, would drop to like a low 12. Um, and just depending on how long I had the vehicle sitting, it would just drop more and more. So the biggest issue, which I had to do, which was kind of a pain, hooking up this guy up to the battery and figuring out what the just as, as it was just sitting what the drain was what the amp drains were my biggest issue was looking online a lot of people were saying online how to do it but they were using different vault meters than what i was used to to using this is the one that i bought and i tried to figure out what was the settings luckily thank you so much chris fix the amazing chris fix his like parasitic uh, battery drain video he did, or actually I think it was just a video just all about like checking your, your battery. He was using the same one that I was using. So I was able to figure out what the settings were. So this one went in there and goes down to that. So that's how I was able to figure out what the settings were to read it correctly. So with that in mind, my biggest thing was to get the vehicle inside the sleep mode. And doing that wasn't all that hard. I was kind of worried about doing that figuring out what to really do. And the biggest thing you have to worry about is to unplug the hood light so it does not know when the hood is open. That's just gonna be this cord right here. I just disconnected this guy. It just comes down from here so the vehicle doesn't know when the hood is open. So you can leave the hood open and the car will still go into the sleep mode. And then the other thing was to physically lock the door. Like when the door was open, put a, uh, Take a screwdriver in and you click it over twice. Once you do it twice, the door, it believes that the door is closed. And after, and it's like 20 minutes or so, the car will just go into sleep mode. So it will just be like in like the normal mode, whatever it's gonna be like when you're just like have it parked normally. So that way you can have the doors open, you can check everything, but the vehicle still thinks it's all closed up. So after doing that, I was able to hook up my vault meter to check the amp draws. And my amp draw was actually pretty high. It was like the 200s. So to my knowledge, it's supposed to be like a 0 0.05, so like a 50. My thing was at like the 200 range, the amp draw, which is still pretty high for a, honestly, any type of car. So basically that led me to do the very tedious job of testing all of the different uh, fuses that were inside of the vehicle. So what I had to do was literally undo the I first start off inside of the passenger foot weld so basically in here there's two little tabs up there you can just undo this whole thing comes off and you unscrew it there's like the fuse box you unscrew that and you have access to all of the uh, fuses I had my wife looking at the meter and I pulled one and just seen I waited like a second to see if there was a, any type of difference if the amp draw was lower or not if not I put it back in pulled another one so I went through this entire list because all the ones that are inside the interior are pretty much underneath here pulled them one by one by one and that was a pain in the butt to do but I did them all nothing inside of the interior made a difference at all so at this point in time I was definitely a little bit concerned because I was just like okay nothing in the interior has made a big difference. And that's what a lot of people said, start off inside the interior, there's probably something in, in here. So I was like, okay, let's move into the engine bay, um, the fuses that are there. Cause I did see someone else in the forums, they said that for them, they had corroded ground wires and they had to literally like off of the chassis, they literally had to undo everything and clean everything up and that fixed their problem. So I was just like, oh no, if, if it's if it's not like an easy fix like with the fuses then it's going to be something else and i don't know it would just my brain at this point in time was just like racing i'm like great it's going to be something not simple at all so i was a little bit concerned at this point in time because to mind you it was still at like a 200 amps or so it was above 200 amps that it was going at and i did do a test i turned on a light i wanted to see what it would draw that made it draw up to like 400. um it took it a second we had to turn it back off for it to like drop to back to 200 but i wanted to see like what the difference was so it's like in that that range uh, but when i had everything hooked up in here going through all of the fuses i went through one by one first started with all the small ones then i went to the larger ones and it was literally the second to last one i checked yes so can you tell me oh my goodness i think i found it okay this is this way 
39. What's 39? 39 is Fog LP. That was one. Oh, yeah. What to pull that one? Five. That's what I mean. It's that, that one, that was probably it. But, like, is this an okay number or what? I mean, it's, it's like half of what it was. Oh. That one was actively like, wait, okay. Plug, let me plug that one back up. Let me plug this one back up. Let me see what it does if it jumps back up. It's at a one right now. Yeah. yeah before that you was it. Get it all the way in. Yeah, this one's hot. Oh, well, I guess I could have. I guess I could have literally felt the temperature wise of one. You didn't know. Yeah, I can try it. This one's the only one that's warm too. Yep. I think we found it. Okay, so at least I think we found half of the problem. There's still there still is a pretty high draw, but it's not as bad as what it was. It literally was like two two hundred, so that's good at least. This one was warm. I'm trying to figure out if I can find any more. Cause I guess I didn't realize like that that one was actually warm to the touch. I'm just trying to feel now. We poured pretty much all of them. When I poured it, it was I believe it was for the. Uh, fog lights. That one was warm to the touch and it it, it, it it immediately made the voltage drop. It's still pretty high. It's still like like a hundred. Like, yeah, like a hundred. I, I want to say definitely cut it in half. So I was like, oh, that's definitely like part of the, the issue. Yeah, so that was my biggest issue that I found. Right now, the vehicle still has a, I would say a semi parasitic drain i'm still trying to figure out what else it can be but that was like the big big issue because before the car would only park for like a day or two and the battery would be like significantly lower now it's not terrible it's kind of a band-aid on the situation i still have to go through and try to figure out what the other issue is but that was my thought process of trying to like get everything figured out what i did do is i do have inside of the vehicle now right now is open this guy up i have extra jumper cables a portable battery booster, which this battery booster has saved me a couple times. And I really love this battery booster. It's like great, which actually I'll have a link down below to this guy. This thing is like literally amazing. I charged it up once and this thing is still at like 100%. It's been like a really long time. And I also have a battery tender just to throw on there, just every once in a while, if I don't drive it, I'm gonna just throw this on there. I know this is a band-aid to the situation, but it does allow me to still be able to use the vehicle and keep the battery topped off. So all in all, it was kind of a pain to kind of figure it out. Just using some, you know, common sense and just kind of going through the problem systematically, I'm sure you, you will be able to figure it out. I did also check to see if the alternator was draining power as well. So we were able to disconnect the alternator uh, from the battery and I wanted to see if that would make a difference. Uh, just disconnected it like the just the like cable and just see if that dropped the voltage that didn't. So it's not that, so we're still trying to figure out there's gotta be something else that's going on. Um, I will say though, on a quick side note, these doors though, cause this is like my first time having a C5 Corvette. I realized you have to like kind of like really close the, the doors. Um, so we can make sure like when they when you're do, when you do just leave it, kind of have to like, you know, really give it some force to make sure that the door is closed. Cause I've done that a couple of times where the door isn't fully closed. So that could be your problem too. If you are like seeing that you are having some type of a drain. Um, but yeah, so for me, it turned out it was my fog light fuse. Uh, I still have to figure that, that, that out why I was doing that. It's still drawing some power, but it's not a ton. Oh, and I did find that I did have one blown fuse inside the interior. I did just change that fuse out. It still hasn't blown again, so we'll see if that one does go, then that could be part of the issue too. Hopefully this video did help you guys out. If you are going through the same type of situation that I was going through, you can figure it out. Don't worry. And if worse comes to worse, you can take it to, you know, another mechanic. But if I can try to diagnose this, I'm sure you can too. But if you guys want to check out this video right here, this was the video of when we purchased this C5 Corvette and we drove it home. Check that video out. It's a really fun one. We'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.